Hi everybody, and welcome to episode 27 of the Bonehead Podcast, where we talk all things Blood Bowl. Welcome back. I'm Ben. My regular co-host Rich is busy with the real world. Um, So I'm lucky enough to be joined once again by friend of the podcast and multiple award-winning painter Ian Warhanum Hannum. Hello. How are you doing today? You all right? I'm great, thanks. That's quite a welcome. (laughs) Uh, Thank you very much for for joining us again. My pleasure. And and giving us a hand. It's really, really great to have you here. And talking of people who are really great to have here, (laughs) we have got... Good guy Lewis, who might be the nicest English blood bowl player in existence, and is also the reigning wobble champion. How are you today? Fantastic, thank you for having me here. Oh, yeah, it's great. Uh, Lewis was last on the show in episode seven, talking about how not to win with undead, which was good. <laughs> um, but on that kind of topic, Lewis, what team did you win wobble with? Well, it happened to be the Lizardmen. Fantastic. So, a bit of foreshadowing there, but Ian, would you talk us through what we're going to be talking about on episode 27? Indeed, yeah. So, as Ben says, very topical. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Lizardman Spike and uh, chatting about the team at large as well. Um, we're going to carry on then looking at some bonehead basics on Lizardmen, which is why well, we've got our expert in the corner over there. How to win in leagues and regular games. And so we're not going to be doing our usual star player feature as that's going to be wrapped up in our spike review. Many star players. Not as many as normal, but what we're going to do is we might have a look at some of the CRP star players as well for those NAF tournament players out there. Um, And just the usual games and hobby for us all. Lovely. Let's talk news. So Ian, what's first on the news for today? So uh, what we have first is the Fanath Dwarf team. Okay, cool. So we did talk about this last uh, last week, or last episode actually. Lewis, have you had a chance to have a look at the Fanath Dwarf team? Yeah, I've had a look. They they are, for me, they look like a throwback to sort of early 2000 Games Workshop Metal Dwarf miniatures. They're fantastic. They, they are. Absolutely brilliant. You're exactly right. They are retro. They're, they're, they're designed as retro. I think they're called Classic Dwarf Team or something. Um, you've got all the positionals, but like you said, Lewis, they've got that old school Warhammer vibe. Now, we talked about them last week because the Kickstarter was going live. Kickstarter is now live. Um, so the early pledge 50 euros for a bunch of guys is now gone. It's now gone up to 60 euros, which is still great value. Mm. Would you pop to the top of it in and just have a look and see how long it's got left? Yeah, so we've still got a week left so we, as got, of recording. Brilliant. So that will be seven days to go. It's Monday now. So we should, this episode will go live on Saturday, so you should have a couple of days left to get your backs in. Um, And just have a look and see. So it's, it's, yeah, it's smashed the goal already, and they're into some of the cool stretch goals. There's a cool star player or two. So have you seen the star players, Lewis? I haven't seen the star players. So these are all stretch goals, but there is a very cool star player who is the chainsaw guy. So it looks like he's riding a chainsaw around. Just up a bit. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so literally Dwarf with Chainsaw he's Dwarf with Chainsaw named. yeah I know so no, non, non IP infringing <laughs> which is pretty cool and they've also um, unlocked the Slayer boss as well yeah. who is basically Grim Iron Jaw yes yeah, yeah. 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 Um, size wise these minis rank up pretty well against the current dwarfs so it's looking really good there's a few stretch goals left to go mm. I don't know if they'll get any more and I'm going to be honest with you there's one there called Hands the Mole which is a dwarf riding a mole rat do yeah, it looks like a naked mower. Mm. Yeah. yeah, weird. And I don't quite get what star player that's going to be, but it's still quite a cool model. Yep. Yeah, I, no, can't still cool. a, I can't think of a dwarf. I, I mean, mean, it could could be an alternate death roller. It's an oh, option. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, I mean, depending on the size, you've obviously got the um, halfling on goat you might be able to. Yeah. But it, I mean, it looks like it's going to be a bit bigger than that, to be honest. So an alternate death roller is, yeah, that's probably a really good shout. However... Have you seen the Death Roller from the Kickstarter? Yeah, well, yeah, we talked about it last time, and it's <laughs> I, already amazing. It's I don't perfect. know why you would replace that because it no. looks so retro. <laughs> so yeah. that's the Fanaf Dwarf <laughs> Team on Kickstarter, or Dwarf Team f- Football Fantasy Fanaf. Um, definitely worth a look, and if you like, you're looking for a different Dwarf Team, mm. worth worth putting a, a Kickstarter on. Then I can't remember when it's supposed to land. Let's have a, just a quick look at the page again, and we'll have a quick look. 
Um, oh, does it say when it's going to? Just a little bit lower. Uh, estimated delivery June 2020. So the downside of Kickstarter is you pay you 50, 60 pounds now, and you then you wait. The upside is that it's probably about 20 pounds less than you'd normally play. You're helping to create some great models, um, and you will forget about them and then they will just randomly turn up and, and it, you know be like hey sweet entire team so the other bit of news that we do need to talk about very quickly first is the lizardman team have landed absolutely if, if we hadn't guessed <sighs> yeah exactly <laughs> so um i did a quick product review for the lizardman this loop that came out with the, the the models and the spike magazine and the dice and things just to have a quick look that's on our youtube channel at youtube forward slash bonehead podcast so have a look at that i don't go into a huge amount of detail but i do cover the basic mm. products and they're really good but honestly it's, it's well worth a look because I was, I was sat at home watching it the other day <laughs> and just um I, just being able to get the idea of scale and a, a good look at the sprues and how it's all going to go together the sprues are great yeah yeah really I know, you've nice. been eyeing them up for some I, have, I saw um you get three headdresses so two for the skinks yep one for the um chameleon skink that would have been perfect when I was doing my Amazon team. However, I'm going to maybe come back to them and do some conversions for star players. So oh, that's cool. That'd be quite They'd cool. be perfect that's for that. Cool. So, Lewis, you've got a beautiful Lizardman team that you made out of the Warhammer stuff, so the Sauruses and Skinks. Yeah. What do you think to the new minis? Uh, I think they are <laughs> absolutely brilliant. I thought you were going to say, oh, they're terrible. <laughs> you know? not, not as good as mine. No, no. no. no I think they're great, <laughs> really nice, big beefy models mm. really the, the, representative the cro Cro Croxigor are, are bigger than the old lizard I think they're big they're, the, the Saurus source. are bigger than the old yeah. sore subject the Croxigor yeah <laughs> yeah sure we we'll get on to that but. yeah that was one of the questions Lewis asked is like oh have they done a new Croxigor no <laughs> no but I do know they're working on it and fair play to them actually they're, they're over achieving a bit at the moment yeah. which is fine so we haven't seen the tree man and we haven't seen the um, the Croxigor be released but mm. they're currently recruiting for at least one more resin sculptor okay because they can't keep up so actually they don't have a crocs they showed that there is one available if you don't want to buy an entire three pound like we did actually i think kudos to them they did a good job with that it's a bit of a pain but i would rather have this team now yes and yeah, find yeah. one crocs ago model yeah. than have to kit bash now it wasn't too hard and you did a great job but yeah, fairly simple to put a Lizman team together with what's out there, but they don't compare to these guys. No, they are this fantastic. Is, this is twenty pounds, and you've got your team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas to get the Lizman team, we well, I bought two sets and we went halves, but that's still about I don't know, probably about fifty quid for two teams, uh, and then the crops of course. So yeah, cool. So Lizman are out. Love them. We're going to talk through some of the stuff in the spike mm -hmm. a bit later on. Kay, what so is next? Right. Oh, this one little bit that was in a thread <laughs> on on Facebook um, is that the Blood Bowl account on Facebook itself did confirm there is going to be a Blood Bowl almanac this year. Yeah, really cool. With all the spike bits in. Right. That said, it's already it October, as Ian just shockingly discovered I know. <laughs> before we were recording. He said, I don't understand why this 3D print thing isn't going to arrive till November. It's just a file. <laughs> and then we looked at the date and it doesn't finish till November. <laughs> but yeah, so if the Almanac comes out ready for Christmas, this spike has only going to have been out for, for a month and a half, two months. Um, now, I don't know whether it's because I kind of work in retail that I'm already living in Christmas, but <laughs> it seems, you know, it's a bit rushed. However, the Almanacs have been really good so far. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm definitely going to pick that one up, particularly the draw of the Spike Yeah, the spike content in yeah. there, because I haven't you know, I've dipped into all of them. Well, the great thing about the Spike magazines is they're eight, nine pounds, or ten pounds probably from Games Workshop or something. If you've got your team, you just get that one book. It's a codex. So Lewis has got his own little copy of the Spike magazine now so that he can edit his his lizard band team and get that extra position on the Check extra out some sweet tactics. Yeah, <laughs> which we'll, we will talk about in a minute. Uh, you know, they're they're quite cool, and I would like to see the almanac. It mm. makes a great Christmas present, if nothing else, because yeah. it'll be twenty twenty five pounds, and that's a good let's say stocking filler. It's a good gift for. It's just a nice book to have. Yeah, and we want to encourage people to support Games Workshop. We know they make mistakes, <laughs> and there's been a lot of stuff on various communities about them making mistakes especially with the new coaches gear but i would rather have the stuff out with mistakes 
because there are no mistakes with these models. No, yeah. <laughs> no, brilliant. And you know what? We've got the rules. We've had the NAF rules now for uh, four or five thousand years. And you can still play the NAF rules with these excellent models. And I'd rather have these excellent models and this cool book and have a few mistakes in it. That doesn't matter. I think it's great. And I want to want to help them make more. <laughs> because... So for the proofreader. We, well, <laughs> I did think that. Games Workshop, if you are watching, please feel free to get in contact. Um, and Ian will proofread it for yeah. you. <laughs> I have plenty of time coming up. So. Yeah, you do. <laughs> cool. So that wraps it up for miniatures and, and, and news like that. I've got a couple of bits to mention. Um, uh, Joe Mama did comment on our YouTube channel. He said, I was right and you were, Joe. Um, and that was about the sevens kickoff thing where the NAF released the rules update saying the entire middle zone of the sevens pitch is eligible for the kick mm. not just the halfway line interesting yes right that yeah we're having a discussion about that weren't we and how strong that makes the kick skill kick is great now um, and I think we're starting to see the most recent episodes of seven super series have that new rule in it mm. and kick is quite cool it's gonna have some implications for fast teams as well I would have thought I haven't found it be too overpowering because no, you can still get right up in the grill. I think the fact that you've got that middle zone anyway yeah. changes the nature of taking the first 10. Yeah. So you're not losing as much. No, it, it's it's cool. Uh, I think they did also clarify that kickoff return, you can't move over your yeah. um, line of scrimmage. Which so makes you, kick even better. Yeah, which is which is fantastic. <laughs> so they can't, you know, you can maneuver around left and right or if they're in the backfield. You can't go forward, so you, mm. it's not quite still as hard to get a one turn in sevens as it is in elevens, which you think is really important because a bunch of one turn scores is only fun if you're throwing people. <laughs> so, yeah, Joe Mama, you were right. Do have one shout out for Griff from <laughs> from Noob with the Brush, and I'm gonna have to beep it out. But, yes, Griff, you are a last time we had this I on the podcast, go. yeah, it's because he was playing elves. That makes so. sense. We'll see you on dwarfs now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if I can beep out all of that. Unless it's the Fanath dwarf team, in which case, good choice. Great models. Go Fanath. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll just quickly wrap up some tournament news. Um, won't take very long. We've got Tombstone tournament coming up soon. That is in two weeks' time. So a week on Saturday. So when this episode comes out, in a week's time, there'll be a tournament going on in pool. It is a horror-themed tournament, so it's for Chaos teams, Undead teams, and a whole bunch of teams from the Secret League. Pop back and look at episode 26, where we talk about the teams, mm -hmm. some of the builds, and some of the fun things you'll see there. Sounds cool. Should be good. More information on our website. Uh, we've got Food Bowl coming up. So this is in Cardiff. This is on the 16th of November, and it is at Firestorm Games. And that is a genuinely really good venue. I know quite a few Age of Sigmar tournaments go there and the feedback is always really good. No, really. So the whole purpose of Food Bowl is it's part of, um, I can't remember what the the event is called, but it's, it's a bunch of different gaming events out on this one day. In this one venue, there's, um, there's, a, there's a Necromunda one, there's a War Machine one, um, and there's a Blood Bowl one called the Food Bowl. And all the money raised goes towards buying food for the Cardiff Food Bank which is fantastic so if you are anywhere near Cardiff uh, on the 16th of November um, have a look just google food bowl it comes right up on the talk fantasy football they do have a Facebook page and I will put it in the show notes really good really worth supporting mm -hmm. additionally this is the first tournament in the Southwest Tournament Championship the SWTC which is a linked a bunch of NAF sanctioned tournaments that I'm collating, mm. which is cool. So I ended up um, taking over from Al. So really excited to see the first one there. The whole point being it encourages people to go to different tournaments. You rank up points and then you get a big trophy at the end. So this one is part of that. And um, I'm hoping to get in contact with uh, the guy running it so we can get some more details out soon because it seems like a really good one to go to. Next tournament, if you could just bring up the show notes when we get in. North Wales Carnage Cup. So we had Rob on a couple of episodes ago to talk about this. This is in Wrexham, 23rd and 24th of November. So Wrexham is North Wales-ish. Um, it's about four and a half hours from where we are in Southampton. 
Tiff has said I can go, Hooray. which is cool. Uh, cool. I'm just trying to figure out whether it's feasible, whether or not I can make it there and back in time for work and stuff, because it's a four and a half hour journey. Mm. But at least you have a bottle of beer to drink on the way home. Uh, yeah, they've made their own beer. <laughs> wow. Brewed their own beer for the event, which is really yeah, quite cool. I think I saw that um, Robert's yeah. received his kind of sample yeah. through. It, really uh, cool. it does look really good. It's the second one, in, and this is also in the SWTC. Two days. It would be my first two day Blood Bowl tournament. Yeah. which I think is a lot of Blood Bowl, but it sounds like a great event. Do you um, know offhand how many games that is? Six. Six, okay, three so two each four day. days then, yeah. Yeah, three on each day. Some other, so the Food Bowl, I think, is four games. They're really pushing it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, three games on each day, hoping to wrap up at five o'clock on the Sunday. So if I can swing it, it would be cool to go to. I think he's got quite a lot of interest already on the way That's to great. 20 coaches. Um, last year's was a really, really big success. And I'm excited to see how well that goes. I'm hoping to see it firsthand. And we did mention the Birmingham Bowl last episode yep. as well in Birmingham, run by Sean. Run by Sean. And um, great event last year. You yeah, were. yeah, we both had a great time. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, and Rich was there too. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He, he had a terrible time because he has awful luck in Birmingham. Does he? Yeah. yeah. So he, I think he went winless or something. Mm. I don't think it's just blood bowl. I heard heard a few war stories on the way out. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> put there any extras? <laughs> so that's Birmingham Bowl for um, Birmingham on Saturday, the thirtieth of November. That wraps it up for news. Okay, so hobby games buying. Let's start with <laughs> Lewis. Have you played any blood bowl recently? Uh, yeah, I have played a little bit of blood bowl. Been playing with the chaos and. Um Experiment with a couple of different teams on Tuesday nights. Ooh, been interesting. That's fun. What, what have you enjoyed? Uh, well, I've been particularly enjoying the Dark Elves at the moment. I've had a yeah. couple of games with those guys. So, um, Lewis was great. We've got a bunch of new players attending our mm. league at the moment. And I know we spoke about that last episode yeah. about how to introduce new players to our leagues. Yeah. Lewis is one get of those. Lewis. Yeah, get a Lewis. <laughs> uh, so, you've run Halflings and Dark Elves just randomly, not your team, yeah, just yeah. to play some games against new guys. I'm glad you've enjoyed the Dark Elves. That's quite cool. Yeah, good fun. They strike a good balance. Mm. Um, you're pretty dab hand at Chaos, but not, not quite as. Uh, well, last season you did almost as well as the chaos as you did with the Elizabeth. Yeah, Which yeah. Was last season, last <laughs> season was my season. So was, it was almost an all Lewis final. Really. It was, yeah. <laughs> he had to pick a team to take him to the top four. It was that good. I had a playbook. <laughs> <laughs> Came with a whistle. He had yeah, the hat, yeah. everything. I think yeah. the uh, the Edge Four Dodge Chaos Warrior, the yeah. Mega Train, probably helped a little bit as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, not yeah, a, not a tactic, but if you get an Edge Four Chaos Warrior. He will do great things, mm. especially if you roll dodge afterwards. That's cool. Um, Ian, been playing Blood Bowl? Um, sort of. I, don't, I haven't played any games since uh, we last recorded. Mm. Um, one hobby thing I have done though, yeah, is uh, I've launched a little hobby blog. This is so cool. So, so I know last episode we said we'd given you the moniker of Warhanum. Yeah. And um, did at the them. beginning of the same, and now there is a Warhanum blog. Yeah. So what's the focus of the blog? Um, it's pretty much whatever I want to do at the time, to be honest. I'm not um, running to a schedule as such, but it's going to be looking at um, so like little hobby articles, maybe talking about paint schemes. So I've done one so far, which is a two-parter. Part one is up at the moment. It's really good. Uh, which is all about painting orc skin, basically. So applicable to Blood Bowl. Definitely. As well. And then as, as part two, I'm going to have some other painters come and sort of join me with it and talk about that, hey, how they've done it so we'll have a pretty big collection of different recipes for orc skin and then I'll probably run with maybe that kind of format for, for other techniques and oh, things like that. I think you definitely should now the pictures work you've done is really good, the actual painting's really good and it's really well written so Thank you. I'll put it in the show <laughs> notes, um, definitely worth a look and you are at Warhanam on the Twitters? Yeah, Warhanam on bleh. At Warhanam on Twitter and Instagram. Brilliant. Uh, and also it's Warhanam on WordPress if you want to have a look at the, That's cool. the blog. That's cool. But yeah, we'll put it in the show notes. Um, I actually haven't played any Blood Bowl. Have I played any Blood Bowl? I played a few games on the iPad. So the World Cup finished recently and there was a bunch of Wood Elf teams with Dreamer in. Mm, I think because yeah I know that looks cool. Uh, I was I always thought the understood meta was that don't take Dreamer on Wood Elves. You want to dash around. Well, maybe going for an upset then. Yeah. I reckon it's the guys well. who took it that have been telling everyone else. Quite possibly for years. <laughs> they've just yeah. been um, gaslighting everyone. That's it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've got the old iPad out while I was away on holiday and um, had a few games. And Well, it's, it's hard to lose against AI with Wood Elves. Mm -hmm. um, but it was fun with the Tree Man. 
I, I like it. That's quite cool. So I did pick up a second box of Wood Elves so I can have my extra catchers because it's a three catcher and a tree man. I've got a tree man. I've got my Ent from Lord of the Rings. So it's big, <laughs> which is really cool. So. Yeah, he's really cool. Um, I might actually run that build in the next league. That'd be great. Because they might. I don't. I, well, apparently they're more. They're the, the most overpowered team. But I didn't think so with the tree man, which is still. It's still quite cool. Oh, I need to. St- so. Since the last episode, I still haven't decided what team I'm taking to Tombstone. Oh. And it's a week on Saturday. <laughs> is it, well, the question is, is it still the two teams that you're deciding? Yeah, to, yeah. Or is it any more snuck in? No, 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 no. Although, <laughs> talking through it, the the, I, the the Demons of Nurgle team sounded pretty good. And I'm really enjoying Chaos at the moment. Yeah. And I built a Nurgle team on holiday. So, yeah, <clears> just one, one of the five, then. One of the five teams. That's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad. So, Lewis, I know we were going to try and pester you to come to any tournaments. Have you have you got permission, or are you not going to be able to make it? Yeah, no, I'm hoping I can be, I can, uh, be there. Oh, that's Your fantastic. first tournament for me, so... I think interesting to, experience and a good chance to Tombstone would be great play. It, it's yeah. just a bunch of players we've got 10 players registered got your chaos already. team as well yeah, yeah. yeah got chaos got undead so oh yeah oh sorted. yeah yeah, yeah I was content. thinking of how could we forget the gyms yeah, oh, yeah. the gyms <laughs> <laughs> the undefeated <laughs> losing streak of the gyms <laughs> I love yeah. that for, the, for those of you that reanimating them yeah well 20 episodes ago Lewis came on because he was yeah. the most experienced coach with our dead <laughs> and experienced is the right word because you yeah. played 15, 20 games of dead experience. 20 ways how not to do it how oh, he didn't lose them all there were a lot of ties in there <laughs> they were well <laughs> <laughs> three is a lot I don't know no. um, but that was amazing but the really great thing is that you went from that season with the wind well that two seasons with the windless undead and oh, yeah. you just smashed face with the lizards yeah. Uh, so that's that's really cool. But yeah, if you can make those tournaments, that'd be great. I'll give you a lift. Um, I can get some get some games in. We've got the Fobble Wobble Cup coming as well. Yeah, looking forward to that. Which is our group Wobble against yeah. a group in Portsmouth called Fobble Fist Filler Bubble. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. I'm hoping Lewis can come. I'm hoping he can bring his lizards or his chaos and give us that edge. Yeah. Um, it should be a cool little one. I'm hoping that we can grow that over the years and incorporate different different clubs and make it That's a bigger cool. event. Always good to have the kind of derby events. Yeah, it's good it's fun. Cool. It's good fun. It's nice to have something. Team events. Just what us versus them. It's quite. Yeah, yeah it's quite cool. Um, been doing any painting other than your blogging? Uh, no, um, a few few squigs from a gloom spike gets, but they um, look really good. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Have you finished the Nurgle team yet? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back to them soon. Have you seen his Nurgle team? Uh, yeah, they're looking good. It's, they're it's ridiculous. It's the reason I bought my Nurgle team. <laughs> that and because, so it was Tiff's birthday. We were on holiday, and I got her one of the. I pre-ordered her the new Harry Potter animated, not animated book, illustrated book, but it wasn't to be released until after we got on the plane. So I did the whole I bought the pre-order, printed a piece of paper off, and then I wrapped it in a Blood Bowl team because <laughs> I'd been joking for ages. And I was like, "What are you getting, are you getting me for birthday?" And I was like, "Well, Blood Bowl team." And she was like, "Don't be silly." I was like, "Okay," and there, she opened up yeah. Blood Bowl team. And I was like, "Look, just look inside the box." <laughs> <laughs> and there it was like, "You've got the pre-order here," and um, I took that wrapping paper and built it into a Blood Bowl mm, team. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to buy some of this Games Workshop wrapping paper. Games Workshop wrapping paper <laughs> for your significant others is fantastic. And in fact, if you've got Christmas coming up. Um, if you can find a way to wrap presents in, in the Lizardman box, yeah. I think it's definitely worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, any other bits and bobs you guys have been up to hobby-wise? No? No, no all no, quiet. No, yeah, all no. quiet, aside from the Tuesday gaming. Ah, oh, I love the Tuesday gaming. Wonderful. Right. Let's talk Lizardman then. Okay, it's time for Bonehead Basics Lizardman. And Comedian Skink. Thanks, Ian, for editing the show. That's, that's cool. That's fine. Right. But he is actually very right, because the only thing that has changed with Lizardman is the Comedian Skink, which, you know what? We'll get to in a moment. They have decreased the star players. We're going to come back to segment two. So we're going to need the CRP to look at that, which covers all our, or, um, all the LF, uh, all the NAF star players, yep. which is fine, but we'll talk through that. So first things first, we've got Lewis here. Lewis here is a pro Lizardman League <laughs> winner. Specifically in the Dibden Perlu area. Specifically <laughs> in Wobble. But we've got on the way to 20 players, and in that league, you beat yeah. at least eight. That's great. Uh, which was awesome. So, really, really good. Let's have a look at the spike. Okay. First things first, we have got 0 to 16 Skink Runners. I don't think they were called runners before. I think that's been I, updated. I think they were just called Skinks, weren't they? I think they were just called mm-hmm. Skinks. But they are runners, and I think that's very fair because. 
as they're stunty, you don't really get to throw with them. You shouldn't throw with them. Lewis might throw with them. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> uh, so they're 60,000 each. Movement 8, Strength 2, Edge 3, Armor 7, and Dodge and Stunty. Normal skills, Agility, and your doubles are everything else. So, Skinks. Lewis, what are they good for? Uh, well, predominantly getting those touchdowns in. They are your ball handlers. Um, they're the ones you've got to look out for because without them, your team takes a, a big hit. It's a bit of a... The Lizardmen are very good at one thing, which is which is power. And then uh, you've got the Skinks as runners. If you lose either of those, then they take a big dive. So a traditional league build. So we're going to talk league here because we focus primarily on leagues. And different tournaments have different build orders. But most leagues start with the million team value. Yep. So you end up with your Croxigal, six Sauruses, <coughs> two rerolls. And what four skinks? I think that's what you yep. actually start out with. So Lewis has, has hit on a very important thing there, and I know you've actually experienced having all four of those guys die. And Ian was the yeah. one that made it happen. Yeah. So with goblins, with goblins, <laughs> six nil, six nil, six What's those chainsaws, nil. and that's it. <laughs> and so your skinks, they're movement eight. They're dodging everyone on a three plus. Yeah, they're great, but they do die. Mm. If you leave them out in the open, expect them to get whacked. And, and rightly so. Uh, I don't want to bury the lead, but everyone else has got edge one. So you are hard pressed to do stuff without these skinks. Yeah, it can be done, but <laughs> yeah. it just makes it yeah. You can. <laughs> Getting a touch back, awesome. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but yeah, so skinks, they are, they, they are your runners, they are the ball handlers. So, Lewis, they come with agility skills. What kind of upgrades do you do? Do you get, or because they're stunting, do you fire them? Um, <laughs> I, te I, just, I tended to keep them. Yeah. Um, on on hindsight, I think they're pretty good as they are, really. So I think if they haven't got something significant, for example, a pickup skill, um, after a couple of levels up, it might be worth thinking about getting rid of them. So we went through this when we talked about goblins. What skills are there on agility? And I think, mm. to be fair, I think we covered it on halflings as well. But sidestep is quite useful, but it is a quite expensive. It's a third of their cost again, and it's it doesn't defend them. They've already got dodge. However, sprint and sure feet, I don't think you can go wrong with. No. I think you start building those guys, or you get one skink that gets a random movement bonus, and then you chuck on those skills. They, they, they become insanely fast. On doubles, though, what's the skills of choice? Um, well, I quite like the idea of wrestle, if I'm honest. Well... Ooh. I love wrestle. I know you have become love, a wrestle I'm fan. A I'm a wrestling fan. Real wrestling. <laughs> uh, what was that? Episode 7 of the most recent su uh, 7 Super Series. Yeah. was the one where you gave the Beastman yeah. wrestle. Um, I think there's a difference between Strength 4 and Strength 2 wrestle. There is, but <laughs> I think wrestle and jump up. All you need is a push. Is a really cool combo. And I think... Actually, yeah. Yeah, that is good. You are paying 30 for the double um, for Wrestle, but actually being able to dodge in on a 3+, plus anywhere because they're stunty. But that's it, because your Sauruses aren't going to be able to dodge into cages. Um, unless you can... Unless you swing Break Tackle and yeah, dodge exactly. and a double up, but then... Then you're gearing them really specifically. Mm, to be a cage breaker. But yeah, Wrestle... The movement 8 is huge. Mm. So they become really good safeties. I say really good safety. They become an option of safety and you only need a saurus or two with guard and around you, and you've got a chance you, to get some good blocks you've got a chance at a one die or even a two die <laughs> and I know from experience with the skaven that having strength two wrestlers is just fine because <laughs> sometimes you just chuck them in there and, and you, like Lewis says you only need a couple of pushes and they, 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 they knock your ball carrier mm. out of that cage it opens the cage up and then you can base with some of your bigger players to create that bigger threat but Lewis, you've got your skinks, you've got the first skill up on them, you roll a double. Yeah. What is the skill? Well, um, I mean, personally, I like the idea of the wrestle. I've never tried it myself. Um, when it comes to smashing cages, I think the lizards are pretty good at that. Well, um, having without, a, it, without any skill ups, I never really struggle to get in. It well, causes problems for cages. With seven strength four or five players, yeah. you, mm. you shouldn't have that problem. So when you ran your lizard team, with your skinks, how, what did what you know? Were there any specific players that were like, "Love this guy. This skill set was great." What were your learnings from running skinks? Uh, well, I think my first thing when I started with the team because I had no experience on was gone Blood Bowl Tactics. <laughs> BB Tactics is a great website. Yeah, brilliant site. Yeah. Um, 
and the consensus there seems to be um, uh, oh, I've forgotten the skill um, it's a pass off assist sure hands is it so catch catch yeah catch, yeah, catch. I didn't um, find that that good but it is an agility skill which can be good the idea being it, it, it works for a stretch play but you just alluded to the king skill which is you, you want to take a skink with sure hands yeah three plus with a re-roll <clears throat> is great the lizardman re-rolls are 60k each and their their team are expensive you only get to take two you build up i think by the end of the league you had four re-rolls yeah i never managed to get a ball handler never no. managed to get any sure Couldn't hands get that, that, that sweet double on the <laughs> um on the skink but if you are running them in a tournament spending a double on a skink with sure hands is, is great it yep. protects you from strip ball with the but it, goal. well yeah absolutely you, you get that integral re-roll I know we're primarily focusing on league but actually if you do get a double on a skink and you're running four or five getting that sure hands to help and pick up the ball mm. is great catch if you've got a sure hands guy you're not going to be passing it but like Lewis said it's great for handoffs well yeah I mean with with a handoff yeah if you if you plan it right you've got a potential base pitch coverage of 16 squares yes almost coast to coast and then once you chuck in maybe you sprint and a, and a couple of um, go for it yeah you <laughs> go you're, wherever the you're, heck you you're, want you're well away <laughs> um, and they're dodging on three pluses with integral re-rolls again yeah. and we've seen that from a couple of episodes of seven super series that you just want to roll those three pluses and actually you can get away with it um so yeah really love those so let's let's go for it the chameleon skink is the new <laughs> player. Here he is. Interesting. In all, yeah. his, all his glory. Doing his Yoshi impression there. With his yeah. Lego hands, which I love. Yoshi for the Americans. Sorry. Yoshi. Um, so, chameleon skinks, 70k. Movement 7, strength 2. Ange 3, armor 7. Dodge stunty. Pass block and shadow. Mm. So, I think most of the community did guess shadowing. Yep. Uh, because they alluded to the sneakiness. I don't think we expected to see pass block in there as well, because those are two of the most complicated skills. They're fine once you get to know them, but it is quite an interesting one. We'll touch on those skills now. So, shadowing. You put the chameleon skink, who's strength two, in base contact with somebody, they move away, their coach rolls 2d6, and basically needs to get eight or more, they're adding their movement and taking away yours. Now, your movement is seven. So Ian figured this out earlier, <laughs> that you can never dodge away from a chameleon skink with a tree man <laughs> without him following you for it's free. A trivia. Yeah, it will just follow you for free. The difficulty for me is I would probably just punch it. So we'll st before we get to pass block, shadowing on a skink at movement seven, what can you see would be the tactical advantages of this new player? I think it's a really good frustration piece because anything that has skills that lets you do things in your opponent's turn that will potentially frustrate their plans yep. on top of them having to roll dice uh, is great in my eyes. Can you imagine, I mean we'll talk about skills more in a minute, but let's say you gave him sidestep. Oh, I thought he was, was going to say wrestle then. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> wrestle too. But your opponent tries to do like what you said, blitz away, yep. rolls, doesn't roll a pal. Or you know, or both down, and actually, you can still put yourself into the position yeah. where they can't just dodge away. Now you are strength two, but you do have dodge, and I don't know, Lewis, have you found that dodge actually does protect your skinks? Yes, it's uh, yeah. an amazingly powerful. So we've got skill. Lizardman player here, a goblin slash Amazon player here. It, it's all about the dodge with these two guys. Yeah, <laughs> and. It, it, it's huge, isn't it? It's a huge defense. Uh, well, I suppose I'm a bit of a halfling coach now, but yeah. it, it's just yeah, it's like, a great, like passive defensive skill. Minus one to hit me. Yeah. Consider the amount of times, I mean, personally, the amount of times where someone has made a breakaway, all of your players are stuck or taken up. You've got this skink that can just about get on the back of them. Yeah. And previously, it was just a really simple blitz and dodge now yeah. just add something else to that well, oh, it will or, follow yeah. it. or a three plus dodge out yeah just them. making them roll dice after dice after yeah, dice yeah. Well, yeah you it's so good it limits the tackle zones so they have to keep dodging and you know it restricts their avenue of movement because most players are going from a three plus to a four plus if they need to move into where your player is yeah which is which is massive i think these guys are cool in the mirror match mm. 
in the mirror match so or against another stunty team or something with um gutters gutter runners these guys are a pain you can't really block away with a gutter runner strength two against strength two no i mean shadowing is a l slightly less useful it, with the gutter runners it movement is, but like you said they're still having to roll dice yeah they're still you know you might be lucky you might come away with two extra dodge rolls or you get to follow up and actually that movement seven you, you stick some onto that player and it, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting quite cool uh, they also have pass block mm. so pass block allows your player to move three squares into the line of fire or in order to base the thrower or the catcher so they say right I'm going to pass with this guy and then you go I declare pass block <laughs> and then they cannot not pass they have to make that pass at the target they measure the range and then you get to move your dude in the line of fire so it, I say it shuts down the passing game it's useful against dump off because it does work against dump off Okay, that's cool. but it's got shadowing as well so they go right I'm going to pass to my elf catcher and you go sure thing pass block base that catcher that catcher then has to fight against shadowing to dodge away uh, for 10k more yep it is um of no use at all against orcs <laughs> dwarves chaos and most other teams i don't think but the model's cool and it gives you a slightly different build yeah i mean looking at uh, there's there's obviously the team layout in the spike magazine yeah and i don't actually think that's quite a good one that personally I would maybe just run the one chameleon um, over having two of them yeah. to start I'd with. I'd be thinking of running one. It'd be interesting to see where you go. So normally with the with the lizard, I don't know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll flesh this out, but you build your team and then you save up to buy rerolls. Yeah. But if it comes to being able to buy another skink, it would be an interesting choice to go, do I get a fifth skink or do I get a second chameleon, for example? It could be quite interesting. So, Lewis, what do you think about this new positional, and do you think it changes the game for Lisbon? Um, great value for 10k. Brilliant. Um, I'd certainly go with one. Um, I'm not sure I'd go with two. I can see situations where two would be great if you're against agile teams. Mm. Wonderful. Um, for an all-round team, I don't know, maybe a purchase for later on in their development. Mm. So maybe it's you want to look at your league and look at the kind of meta... Yeah, and because it's quite a, a meta like, piece, really, isn't it? it? Is, yeah, 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 yeah. Like you say, in a bashy league. Yeah, don't yeah, no leave good. them at home. Yeah, save, save, <laughs> save ten k. Yeah, save ten k and get that movement. I, I like that it does give you a slight. It gives you that choice. Yeah. Do I go movement eight or do I go funky skills? It's an interesting trade off. So I like this positional. I don't think it's going to change the game massively. It just gives you an extra build choice, which I think is really good. Mm. And then you've got the classic Saurus blockers, who've now been given a positional as well. They're 80k, <laughs> which is a bargain. Six move, strength four, edge one, armor nine, and the skill, right, the skill is N-O-N-E, none. So they come with no <laughs> skills. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no skills. They are fast, clumsy chaos warriors. Mm. One move for one edge. Fast and punchy. Oh, they're great. That's all you need. But they're you great. get six of them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're brilliant. They are formidable. Even with no skills, they're tough. Yeah. Even with um, no skills, at the beginning of a league, that strength advantage. Yeah, and um, it's it's intimidating to try a couple of a couple of strength four guys. It makes life difficult. Yeah. If if you run a predominantly strength three team, having six of them. And then your crops are as well on the lineup. You've yeah. just got strength for days. Yeah, the difficulty comes, and the skill, I would say, comes in, in getting them levelled up. And there are some coaches out there that recommend only scoring with your sources. So, yeah, I it mean... It's a five plus to pick up a ball. I mean, you did have one team called Scorus at one point, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. But then Liz men do a couple of things really well. Um, they're really good, they're punchy, they're tough. Um, if you can get the ball and cage it, particularly against the weak, weak team, in fact, I think I did have one game against um, Rick... Where I I did the the beardy move of just caging in the corner for the last couple of turn downs and he he couldn't do a thing probably couldn't he actually couldn't so leap yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> leap rest just just <laughs> chuck it in there <laughs> Get, dodge. wrestle skink would have been right what I was going to say yeah. <laughs> yeah dodge that skink in with wrestle and just go for the two die up what would you need three plus three plus 
two dire. Yeah, easy. easy. It's yeah. almost certain lead to fail. So <laughs> yeah. So right here is the the question. First skill on a Saurus. It's not a double. In fact, I, well, I don't think there's a double you'd take. General skill. What are your skills? Without question, block. Personally, yeah. boring, safe. But I, I remember you having this chat with the group for a while of do I go for block it's more efficient do I go for mighty blow and that will hopefully get that extra that extra SPP to get mm. there and I think you had the same quandary about your Nurgle, Nurgle guys yeah um, what do you think is the answer to that one Ian? I think the correct <laughs> answer is in fact block <laughs> But like Lewis saying, I think the in final a, answer is Nardi Blow. That's yeah. it. In a league setting where you're looking to have a bit of fun, I think play around with the skills. But if you're looking for just building a really solid yeah. bedrock of a team, go for block. Yeah, it will take you a few extra games to get that second skill. But, but at that point, you've got a strength four blocker, uh, and yeah. you're doing a great and job. It doesn't matter if it takes a few games. Yep. So we run with the D three MVP. I think most leagues do now because I think the 2016 rulebook chucked it in there proper. Mm. Um, but it does help so you can just chuck them on Saurus is, and then as soon as you get one casualty and they're going to get a casualty yep. eventually they get that level they get that block and then they become absolutely brutal can you imagine if you could buy 100k 6419 blockers that would be super that would be absolutely super um, as you progress with them do you go uh, block mighty blow guard and just black orc for, for days personally guard yeah. on everything they become God. such an issue they're, they're tough as it is strength 4 give them block they become harder give them guard they, they're they a real force it's boring it's safe but they are seriously tough they cause a lot of headaches with their so skills block guard then mighty blow uh, I, I'm again on the fence it depends what you want mm. I, I'll be on the fence between mighty blow or stand firm I was oh. going to bring up stand, stand firm, firm is br- is particularly if you're caging like you say yeah and I then mean they are I don't know. It depends how you want to play them. I was more of a Cajun player, and then a breakaway at the end. Um, Your success speaks for itself on that one. I think. I think cage create as much damage as you can on the way up, mm. and and then make a break for it. Yeah, and you've got you know seven players to do it with. You only need four to cage with. Yeah. Stand firm, then you chuck them on the corner of a cage, and you just yeah. they just can't get to it. Yeah. Um, that's that's horrible. That does not sound fun. <laughs> uh, and that uh, basically is uh, why well, we all conceded against Lewis, and that's how he won the season. <laughs> Some of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we didn't. We made him work for it. Um, so, Soros's uh, doubles. What are your thoughts on doubles for Soros's? Well, the obvious one is dodge. Given bludging Soros again, it just as a defensive skill more yep. than anything. It just gives them. It makes them even harder to push down. One and six, unless you've got that's tackle. it. You, you get that extra one minus one to hit or wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wrestling source. <laughs> no, 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 not wrestling source. No. Because of the low edge. Um, also, you want block instead. You don't. You, yeah, I don't but think you need both. No, 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 no. I'm saying wrestle instead of a block. Nah. No. No. What, what's what about break tackle? Well, that's what I was gonna. I was gonna lot, again, like yeah. if you look on BB Tactics, as I did, that was what a lot of people recommended. <laughs> Not necessarily to jump into a cage, but to free your guy up to get to Yeah, the, I think to get break tackle is good to start a blitz off. We've seen that break tackle is fantastic on tree men in Blood Bowl 7s. Um, I don't know if fantastic is the right word, but it works. And it, you know, it helps them be more mobile. These guys have got movement 6, so actually you're, you're dodging out on a 2 plus yeah. with break tackle. And then you've got 6 squares of movement to go and chuck your guy in. Great for a blitz. And great if they've got guard. And I mean, what's even better with them as well is although we talk about putting break tackle on some of the big guys, yeah, these guys don't have the the nega traits in the same way. No. So if you do need a reroll, you're still good to go. Fine. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'd be thinking maybe maybe on a couple, That's maybe on skill. a couple, maybe on one. Just it is a skill. Um, gear up a blitzer. Someone who knows what they're doing. The key is to win against lizard men. Either take the skinks out. Yeah. Or Isolate the source. And it's not too hard to do if you can. Yeah, you can you're, you're exactly around. right. Get, taking those skinks out, and then the team cannot do anything. Uh, would you take an edge up on a on a source? It's a lot of money. Was it forty k? Yeah. So yeah. it takes them to one hundred and twenty k, and they're still not as good as a chaos warrior, but they've got one movement. No, I no. I don't think it is worth it. 
Like it might be alright to pick up that ball on a four plus, but block is probably better for your team as an overall. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it's one of one interesting thing to do that. So talking of of stat ups with the skinks and the chameleons, what's what stat ups are we looking at that, that, that are really useful? Well, certainly agility. Agility. I awesome. would say movement on the skinks, but maybe not on the chameleon. The the movement would help the chameleon for shadowing. But yeah. But but again. I don't know how useful that is going to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, might be worth trying. Definitely. On I mean, <laughs> at the, the point you've got to there, you've probably failed one of the um, yeah. shadowing rules. Yeah, yeah. Strength? Mm. I'd love a strength three skink. Um, Dodge Stunty, you know, he's getting that one die block. One dice. <laughs> it's it, it, One dice is huge when you're planning on two up. Mm. Strength three. What you want to do I think strength it, three wrestle, Ian. Yeah, if it comes when you've already got some skill investment and it matches up, yes. Oh, yeah. If it comes on a vanilla skink, I would be wary of 50k. Yeah. On a, uh, you know, vanilla strength 3 skink. Movement, absolutely. Movement 9 skink. Yeah, movement. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, movement, great. Amazing. Strength 3 skink. I would probably do it. Just because. Just for the lols. <laughs> uh, but for optimal, at that point, you're probably better off taking block or wrestle or sure hands because you would be rolling that double mm. and you're probably better off but Saurus st stats do you need armor 10? no no <laughs> yeah but can't hurt can it? <laughs> well if you get the option of armor you get the option of movement so would you rather have a movement 7 Saurus or an armor 10 Saurus? again it depends if, he, if his role is to stand as a pillar on the corner of your cage then armor fantastic if it's you're gearing him up to be more of a blitzer role movement. then movement is yeah. fantastic strength that's got to be a no brainer yes obviously yeah, yeah. it just makes him at that point a seriously I've, I've got two crocsicles amazing big guy yeah <laughs> which is awesome but <laughs> agility not so much so agility for your little guys and strength and movement for your big guys and we do have one more big guy to talk about which is the crocsicle mm. so choose your own model You've got some old ones. You've got some major Sigma ones. <laughs> I picked up a crocodile guy from yeah, War Machine. Loads of third party. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Fanath guys do a really cool Lizardman one. I was going to pick up um, Morgan Frog, <laughs> which is a very cool model, but they're sold out. Oh, That's how cool it is. So, Crocsigore, 140,000. Movement 6, Strength 5. Edge 1, Armor 9. Uh, Lona. So, Lona, Bonehead, Prehensile Tail, Thick Skull, and Mighty Blow. So strength five, mighty blow, awesome. What what have you found with the Croxagor list? Um, well, he's he's got that bonehead, so he can he's he's a little bit susceptible to letting you down. The fact he's movement six for me is the the best. That's it really is cool. brilliant for a big guy. Really good. Um, I I built mine into a bit of a roadblock. I just used to let him sit on two or three guys while the cage moved on and he would quite happily sit there and either make the opponent roll dice trying to dodge away or just just punch people prehensile tail minus one to dodge away yeah 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 minus one to dodge away with that prehensile tail it's not quite tentacles but it's the closest thing you can get while keeping your soul <laughs> <laughs> which I quite like thick skull helps it out thick skull armor nine these guys are hardly ever going anywhere yeah hence the roadblock comment um Mighty Blow, super. Bonehead is the best of the bad skills. Best of a bad bunch. Yeah, sure. Twice, three times a game, he's going to stand there and do nothing, but you've got to be tactical with what you do with him. Yeah. As for skills, what have you found that, that benefit the Crocs of this? Well, you want to give him block as soon as you can. So is that, that's a double for him. It is yeah. a double. So you were pretty lucky. In that was my first skill. Yeah, your first skill. So that really helped out massively. So good. Um, break tackle. Break tackle is, I think, is fantastic mm, on yeah. big guys. Great, really, really useful. I'd, I would recommend it on them. Um, stand, stand firm, guard. guard. Yeah, I was going to say guard. Yeah, guard he, is great because he's, standing he's always going to be in the action. Um, often, I would leave my big crocs. I wouldn't put him on the line of scrimmage. I'd leave him stand okay. stood behind the model. So if, particularly if um, I was uh, kicking, and he just acted as a little bit of a dissuader. <laughs> He's a linebacker. Yeah, point. yeah, yeah, for following up. Yeah. So you've got your main line, which I'm assuming is four, five, six Sauruses, 
and you've got a Crocs in reserve. A movement six is massive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can sit, you, uh, you can pop them in the middle. That's the whole. Yeah, stick them, stick them in the, the middle. And thing. Cover, the, mm. cover the whole pitch. Yeah, they're really uh, good. Lona does hurt you on blitzes as the bonehead, but sometimes it might be worth taking the punch. Yeah. One thing, prehensile tail with the minus one to dodge away, does pair up nicely with the chameleon skinks. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So if they pull off the shadowing. The ma you know you're making it even worse. Yeah, you've got a few layers of yeah. denial. <laughs> yeah, well, if you if you could with that movement six get them next to, for example, a catcher. Yeah. Or someone who whoever happened to have the ball Which and get a chameleon six, stick on them as well. You can do, and then with that, with strength five, if you chuck that break tackle on them, you you know you're two plus in into what one tackle zone. You know you're three plusing into two tackle zones. Mm -hmm. That's 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 good times. <laughs> you know, it gives you a four plus into three tackle zones, doesn't it? Strength five is uh, our strength five. Uh, strength five makes it a one plus, so two plus, three plus, four plus. So mm -hmm. if you dodge in with a break tackle, Saurus into there, four plus Crocs, yeah, uh, with yeah, yeah. four plus with the Crocs, not great odds to be sure with the loner, yeah. with loner. But then if you get a double and you're not going to take block or he's already got block, chucking a dodge on a Crocsicle. <laughs> may seem wasteful but you love it as a defensive skill yeah absolutely i agree with it as a defensive skill and then if you've got break tackle break tackle dodge is an underrated combination but it is kind of third fourth level skills isn't it yeah yeah you don't go oh i've got my crocs to go let's go straight in with this but you develop them into it and if you're going to pull off the double block is absolutely the way to go um is frenzy general it is isn't it Frenzy's general, yeah. So actually, we didn't bring it out with the Saurus, but it's an option. It is an option, and I think you know Lewis said like you can be a bit crazy with one of them, yeah, and go for the break tackle. The one with the twitchy eye, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah keeps the, licking it. The one, that, the one that dog bites. <laughs> yeah. um, the one who yeah. keeps his mouth brace. <laughs> yeah, uh, I wouldn't consider it personally. No, I think it's. I mean, it's great if if you want to smash cages, amazing. But you, you'll get them into trouble, and you'll get them isolated more often than not. And I you have you said need to, they need to keep together. Yeah. When you get that guard or he's, that block, he's better if you can give him guard and stick him on the corner of a cage, for example. Yeah, I like it. So he's brilliant. the rerolls to sixty cage, which does limit you. You normally need to start off in the league with two. You can do a bit of a build around and you end up losing a couple of Sauruses. You end up starting with one Crocs, four Saurus, and you get your three rerolls, I think. Mm. Which is probably good for one off games, but as a league development, you're better off starting with those Sauruses to build up those SPPs. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to put Lewis right on the spot here. <laughs> you're going to a tournament, you're taking Lisbon, you get four skills, one of them is a double. What do you do? Right. What do you do? And the same question is going to go for you, Ian. All right, but I've got thinking time. <coughs> You've got thinking time because Lewis <laughs> right. is going first because he is the four, professional Lisbon player. Four skills and a double, right? Well, um, tricky one. I think I'd be tempted to. Um, I don't know. Can you get agility on a double? Yeah, on a skink. So I, I think agility is a single for a skink. Um, I mean, oh no, you can't get plus edge, can you? No. no. No, okay. Well, that makes it easier then. So in that case, maybe I, I think I'd play really safe, give three of the um, six source block. Yep. And with a double, that's the question. What would you do with that? Uh, I'd either spend it on the crocs and give him block again. Yeah. I think I'd do that, actually. You do think you'd do that? Yeah, solid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, solid all round. Counterpoint in any difference for your your ideal list of thirty uh, seconds? Well, I definitely go for the block on the crock score, no doubt. Well, you would. You yes. wouldn't go for the double on sure hands. Nope. Ah, that's <laughs> nope. interesting. So I put the double on the crocks for block. Yep. Probably give two of the other sources block, and maybe give sprint to a lizman. Uh, to a um, to, a, to skink. a skink to a skink. That's quite cool. Or catch. I I think I would go for the sure hands on a skink. Uh, I think that if you've got that Sora at uh, the Croxagore, I'd go guard on him and I'd put two blocks on, on the Sauruses and you play a strong middle field, you've got that guy with sure hands, protects him against st strip ball <coughs> but it plays in with the Crocs, the Crocs kind of helps protect him and, and you've got two threats then instead of just one. That said, there's not a lot in it because 
if you go for a shorthand skink or a blocking Kruxagor, you're fine. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are fine. But there are a couple of other things you can do with them if you're going to go to a tournament, especially at 1100. That's it. I mean, um, you could use that extra to get the reroll. Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, but Lizardmen are up tier one. They are probably in the top three teams. Uh, Wood Elves, Lizardmen, Undead, Necromantic are doing really well at the moment, and you've got Dark Elves. So they're definitely in the top five. And I think they deserve to be. Yeah. Um, because they've got everything you need. So, Lewis, general tactics or general league development for this team, what are you looking to do? Right, well, number one, you've got to focus. Uh, the Skinks all, the skinks level ups will come naturally because the, you, you'll, you'll tend to fight them scoring a lot more. Um, you can make a concerted effort and try and get the ball to a source and get the source of scoring. Again, that will level them up quickly. Or it'll put them within the MV, MVP range. Which is, which is huge. So I think that's not a bad tactic. If, if you're caged up, you're in the opponent's end zone, um, and you've got and you've got time. Try and get it to one of your source. If, them, if you're in a safe in. space, you've, what is it? Four plus and that uh, five plus uh, and that. Yeah, five five plus and then with a team reroll, I think it's a bit above fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. Of the time you'll get it, so um, worth a punt, maybe. Generally, yeah. all the sources need block. I would say as a first skill, boring safe, but it, it really pays off. Um, skinks, I think you want to focus if you can get a sure hands. Skink, brilliant, take it. If after a couple of levels up, um, they haven't got that, I'd be thinking of ditching them unless they've got something along the lines of, it, unless they've got really lucky in roll plus movement. The, the good thing about them being strength two and armor seven is they don't always last all that long. <laughs> yeah, the choice isn't always And they're cheap yeah. as well, so. 60k is a bargain. Yeah, they're great. Really? And, and they're really good by themselves. Hmm. Um, three plus, three plus to, to pick the ball up with a team roll, re-roll. I never really struggled. I never managed to get a skink with your hands, and um, it, you've never, I it's never, I never a problem. Uh, yeah, occasionally they let you down, but normally that's at the start of the turn. So I, I have had the pleasure of running an all skink team <laughs> um, at a tournament in, in wow. Birmingham. Uh, it was minor bowl, so it was against stunty league teams, and um, they were great. Yeah. Just movement eight everywhere, that's speed. And yeah. I took Slibley, who is now gone. Uh, but he had guard as well, so it was quite cool. It was my one guy, all skinks. It, it can be done. I wouldn't recommend doing it in a league. Some tournaments allow them to ca classify as stunty at that point, which opens up different skills or at mm. least the stunty award. That'd be fun. Um, now they've got chameleon skinks, it, it, at least it gives you a different different thing. The one thing I've noticed about the Lizardman team, say noticed noticed by reading it, uh, <laughs> no no general access to leader, no general access to passing. They do. They are slow to progress with the rerolls, and there's a lot of tournament builds, and also league builds where you go light on the rerolls. This is one of those teams, and you can sometimes compensate with leader. Wood Elves is another one of those teams. Mm -hmm. You've got a thrower. He takes leader. You get that reroll, and you kind of net that worth. You can't do that with this team without spending a double. And we've already identified that sure hands block wrestle. Block again on the on the crocs. It, doubles are so useful, and there's there's no you don't want to take leader on a Saurus because you'd much rather give him block. So that covers the build in each of the player types. Is there anything else on there that you want to get across from playing against or playing with Elizabeth? Well, I guess one question really for Lewis, um, more on the tactical side, um, would be obviously with a lot of teams when you're kind of thinking you're kicking. And you've got to place your team down. A lot of teams will want to put linemen at the front as a bit of damage limitation for some of the key players. Yeah. Now with skinks, obviously, filling that kind of not to sixteen position, you're not necessarily wanting to put them forward. Do you go heavy and all six saurus on the line, or do you try and mix it up? Uh, and where's the where's the crop score fit into that? That's a great uh, question. It depends on who, you, who you're facing, I suppose. Yeah. So if I were facing, let's <laughs> say, <laughs> I don't know, an, an elf team, <laughs> a human team, Skaven, strength three, then yeah, but stick all you guys on the line and take the blocks and, and hopefully that you'll end up with a few punches. I, I played team. that match up in the final against that. And it <laughs> yeah. was awful. Tough game. Oh Tough game. my gosh. Laying up though. against strength four, strength five, mm. block guard. Yeah. It's just 
awful. That game was lightning. Like, it was four. Three, three, four, wasn't it? It was amazing. Three, three, it was a three-two win to you in the right. end. I think, I think all of three our games are three-two. A drive. Oh, that's it. <laughs> and you just lose that attrition, and then you put your blitzers or you're, you're having to put those guys on the line, and it's just bad times. Whereas these guys, they're armor nine, and you mm. take one of them out, there's still five and yes. a croxagor. It's it's just broken. <laughs> but what I would say, though, on the flip side, is if you're facing a bashing team, mm. then you you haven't really got a lineman standing. I mean, every, everything is everything's really important. You can afford to get a lineman knocked down. It's not the end of the world. With these guys, you really rely on because if you're a saurus down, you're you're down a protective piece yeah. for your skins. So um, if I were playing a bashier team or a team I knew had a lot of mighty blow, had block. Claw. Um, <laughs> claw, yeah. yeah. I, I'd go for damage limitation, put three Saurus on the line. Um, either stick the other guys right behind them. So if yeah. players are following Keeping up. Keeping the ball if, carriers a bit safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, and always keep the ball carriers back and rely on their speed. Well, that's to, it, uh, be able it? to make With eight movement. Form. With eight mm-hmm. movement, you can keep them back. And then if you're going to move up the ball, you get to do the cage, and it becomes a really safe cage. I'm actually really excited to play some games with Lisbon mm. now because they are a they are a kind of unique tactical challenge in that they're really stark contrast. You know, you've got chaos, you've got a couple of strength four guys that are actually all right. These guys have gone deep, like right, you can punch things well, but you can't carry. And then you've got these guys that can carry and they can't punch things well. <laughs> it's it's really that's the sweet and sour team of Blood Bowl. Yeah, I'd, I'd say when you look up starter teams, everyone says undead. Um, Personally, I think these guys are a brilliant starting because they're dead simple. They so do a couple of things really well. Will in our league has picked up. Well, he's picked up. He's picked up his own Lisbon team from twenty years ago. Yeah. Wow. That his parents found Dusted it, it off. And, Amazing. And under the, under the tutelage of Lewis, um, has has done that. He's, <laughs> he's, he's rejoined Blood Bowl and he's brought his lizards. And yeah, you, you, it's not it's not a massively complicated team. No. But they have that grind that they they build into something great. They're very forgiving. Mm. On the whole, that's strength four. I'm a nine. High movement. Mm. Yeah. And you know what? You're not leveling up skinks to be amazing. So if you lose a skink that's on its second skill, unless it's sure hands, it's fine. They skill up pretty quick. Yeah, they it's skill up pretty good. Mm. And, and I think on another point, they like you, to kind of reiterate, they are a team with just very clear roles. Yeah. And as well, the starting skills. Apart from now, the chameleon who's kind of in the mix, yeah, are very just quite simple. Does what it says on the tin. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would agree. I think they're a great team. And we're not just saying that because the team looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. actually, if someone is looking to get into Blood Bowl and they don't and they want something different, these guys are going to paint up great with contrast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so skin on them. if there are new players coming in, Lizardman is not a terrible thing to do because they get to they get to bash, they get to dash. The only thing you can't do with them is throw. Because you're minus one for stunty, and your you crocsigors just have no hands. Um, uh, your sauruses have no hands, but the crocsigors <laughs> don't either. <laughs> Basically, they are just all fists, and they play like it. Yeah, they're great. They play like it. Really, yeah, very simple. Bash, cage. Yeah. When when you get within eight, ten of the opponent's end zone, open the open the defense up if you can with those sauruses and straight. Was them in there? Easy. Okay. I have a second lightning round question for you. It's Blood Bowl 7s. You've got 600 gold. Your rerolls are doubled. Wow. Four positionals. What is your build? And we're back. <laughs> so, we will start with Ian. Okay, so, well, for a bit of a lighter build, something that's maybe a bit more mobile and ball handly. So, we've got two Sauruses. Okay. Ooh. Four regular Line Skinks. Yep. One chameleon. Oh, cool. Novelty factor. And also, I think just a few of those skills might come in. And then a reroll. You can fit the reroll in. Just about. And get it to 590. That's cool. That's cool. So, um, we need a Carol Vorderman, really, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a Rachel man. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> we fear change. Lewis. <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Talking of change, chameleon skink. Lewis, what's your build? Um, I've, I've gone for a bit more muscle, actually. So. <laughs> The reverse of Ian, I think I'm bang on those um, on points. So I've gone for three Saurus, yep. uh, a reroll, and three Skinks. That's. It, he means four, four Skinks. Okay, I was going to oh, say. Four Skinks, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely fine. Um, that is probably the better of the builds. 
So 240 and then another 240 and then it leaves you 120 to take you up to 600. I think it's definitely important to get that re-roll in there. Yeah, mm. because you don't With have lack of you don't have general access. Skills. Yeah, uh, um, and it's cool. The other build is four sauruses, three skinks, mm. and a hundred k to spend on whatever you want that isn't a re-roll. Mm. I think that list would be rubbish. Mm. So I think I think both those lists are quite cool. Um, I think having that re-roll in there is really important, which for sevens is unusual because normally you kind of yeah you wing it. But with these guys, you've got to have that consistency. So brilliant. Thank you for participating <laughs> in the lightning <laughs> round. That was fun. Anybody out there listening, if you've got an idea for a, uh, a Lizardman 7s team, let me know. There is a very good reason, and that is that I want to play Lizards in, in 7s. And I'm, I am tempted by the All Skink build, um, but I don't think it would do very well. <laughs> all Skinks and a Croxigore for the win. I think you win a lot of games, but I think you take a lot of casualties oh, yeah. at the same well, time. Yeah. That's it. If it's Resurrection in Sevens, you get away with it, which is cool. Lovely. Thanks very much, guys. That wraps up the Bonehead Basics part. And now we'll move on to Inducements. Okay, it's Inducement time. What we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, Childbirth together. Uh, <laughs> wrong, wrong Inducement. That'll be you in a month's time, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Two, oh, yeah. two months. He's got, right, so you've got some painting first. Hey! I'll see how people finally loaded. Um, right, so we're going to look at the spike inducements. So we're going to do the star players and the wizard, which is quite cool. You have have you seen the wizard rules yet? Never played. I've seen them, but I've never played a wizard. But have you seen the lizard one? No. Oh. The lizard wizard. Yeah. The lizard, lizard wizard. 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 Slam mage, obviously. <laughs> it does say you need a model, which is a very expensive way to do it. Right. We don't play that rule, which is nice. I think it's important you don't play that rule. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I would agree. Can you still buy slam mages? Yeah. Ugh. 40 quid, probably. <laughs> the old hovering one. Yeah, yeah, still going. I bet it's not metal anymore, well, which no. is very good. Just use one of the um, One of the markers. tokens. Yeah. yeah, this is my wizard. <laughs> so, um, we've got some new star players. But we are going to look at the old ones as well. So the first new star player is Anki Panky. <laughs> Anki Panky. Three. Plays for Lizardman. Um, here's 210. Movement 7, Strength 4, Edge 1, Armour 9. So he is a Saurus with plus 1 movement. He's got Block, Grab, Stand Firm, and Loner. So, what are you guys' thoughts on this guy? I love him. It's brilliant. Love that extra... I think you get a lot there for the price. Love that extra movement. He's I mean, high movement is brilliant. Yeah. That's that's great. Um, grab is, is fantastic as well, combined with that high strength. Um, depends on the team a little bit, I suppose, that you're facing off against, but on the whole that's great. And the good thing is, because he's a star player, most of the time you're going to get to choose if he's yes. the right build for you. Yeah. Um, and sorry, but stand firm, I mean, you were talking about it earlier with the Saurus Warriors and building them up. This guy sounds great for the corner of a cage. Yeah, 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 he's just a tank. Mm. Uh, grab counters out sidestep as well. So Ian's sidestep wrestle skinks <laughs> aren't, aren't getting into your cage no. not with grab and also he can feed there'll be no anky panky here he can feed him to others no anky panky yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, well take him on a cage put him up against some uh, opponent pieces and let him feed them to the uh, yeah to the rest of the source so I think it's important that we look at the player he's replaced mm. so that's anky panky he has essentially replaced slibly yeah so it's kind of a zara kara Kind of thing, situation. yeah. Yeah. So Slibly, who's in the NAF CRP, is an old one. Depending on your league, depending on your tournament, you may have access to both. You may have access to one or the other. For our league, we're going to run with both forever, I think, yeah. until something changes. So Slibly is two hundred and fifty thousand. Movement seven, strength four, edge one, armor nine. So it's forty k more. Same stats. Lona block grab stand firm guard so I took this guy with my skink team because I thought guard block strength 4 this guy's great 40k difference guard or no guard first of all if you're in a league or tournament that's running both that is a cool little choice yeah actually do I save the 40k and not go with guard or do I actually you know at guard he's even better so what are your thoughts on Slibly versus Anki Panky I think that 40 that 40k and guard I think that's pretty good value, actually. If I had the option, if I could afford it, I'd go with him. With guard, he is, a, he is a proper pillar of your your cage. Pillar of the cage. That's I think want. a lot of it depends on the rest of your team. 
because if you have some developed sources, mm -hmm. are these guys adding enough to take up 250 or 210 of your inducements to basically fill a role that's maybe already being covered? As in, you could take, uh, if you were a Saurus down, say, you could take a Merc Saurus with Guard. Yeah, or and he would be 150k. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't have block. No. So, you know, it's interesting. It is interesting. I think it's cool that there are the different choices there, or at least the difference in the players. And I think, you know what, if if you've only got 210k, Anki Panky's just fine. But is he better than a wizard? Yeah, slash re-rolls. Is he better than a wizard? Kicks, is he better know. than a re-roll? Um, I think he is. I think... If you're taking inducements, you're likely to have a more vanilla team, really, with Lizardman. Because how often were you team value down, Lewis? Uh, yeah, exactly. Often. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, wow. I would say, well, in our league, in our league. Okay, fair enough. Was that in when James was running the, well, glory, the glory Dwarves? That was oh, in your. Yeah, yeah. That was in our third season. It was, it? yeah, and, and we, third season know, there was, was a couple new team of for me. So, I mean, I wouldn't say That's fourth season, third and fourth, because we're in fifth now, and Lewis won four. Yeah. So yeah, you ran uh, it in yeah. three and four. So I wouldn't say they're, they're particularly expensive. I mean, if I compare them to chaos, mm. chaos I've found ridiculous. The <laughs> points just ran out. Oh, just for bloat. Yeah. So they do okay. Two hundred is probably a reasonable limit. Talking of two hundred, we have now got another cool combination of players. Yeah, I really like uh, this one. So we've got drool and dribble. <laughs> so they play for Lizardman. They're two skinks. Mm -hmm. So the first skink is drool. He's uh, well, they're both for one ninety. Yeah. Okay, 190, you get both. You have to have two player slots, but it only takes up one star player choice. Okay, that's really so cool. So you can, you can run him and Hanky Panky. Um, so they're both 8, 2, 3, 7 skinks. One of them, Drool, has Dodge, Loner, Sidestep, Stab, and Stunty. And Dribble has Dodge, Loner, Sidestep, Stunty, Sneaky, Get, and Dirty Player. So one stabs, one stomps. That's fantastic. For 190, you get two skinks. All right, that's that's only fifty k more than if you were buying them on your roster. That's only what thirty k more than getting two skillless skink mercenaries. And you get a guy that can stab some stuff. Who is a throwaway? Now he's a star player. If he dies, you've only really lost ninety k. Yep. That's a goblin secret weapon, <laughs> or a you know, isn't it? Really mm. in in the in the way of value, and he's got dodge. And he's got sidestep, so he's going to keep in that stabbing range. But does it fit with what the Lizardman team want to do? I think what it does, unlike Slipley slash yeah. uh, Anki Panky, is give you another dynamic. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, you could build a fouling skink, but generally you want to save that for ball skills. Yeah. Because they're not getting SPP through fouling. No, they're uh, scoring. They are scoring, like Lewis said. They just and actually, end up. What these guys do is offer you a couple of ways to really put in the the pain against teams, but with dodging stunty so, uh, skinks. They are, they are kind of B grade removal, aren't they? I really like them. I think the key to these guys is the value, like 190 for two. 190 for two players. Fantastic. And if you lose one. You've, you've got one yeah over. and it can still handle the ball it can do all the things a regular skin can do yeah it's just got extra skills um i think for 190 if you can take out for example an ogre a troll <laughs> um <laughs> a, you know any, oh, any anything yeah any, could, any big guy if you could stab against say norse or amazon yeah who have got a, a blodging oh, blitzer ugh. yeah absolutely with all the mighty blow and all that and you can stab him off with a skink Quits yeah, in. It's fantastic. So and if you can't stab him off, foul them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what I was going to yeah. say. And with that, with that agility, I mean, it's so easy to get a couple of guys on on so a down yeah. player and just so they are nice. Put the boot in. So Alternative removal. They're fantastic. Dirty player gives you plus one. It's mighty blow for on the ground. Right? Yeah. And uh, does he have sneaky get as well? Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, there you go. So, I I think that's a great combination. I like them, and I'm really excited to build the models. Yeah, and actually, that, they're they're a lot of fun. They are a lot of fun. So I think it's another thing to consider. I don't think there's been a lot of fun in in the Lizardman. I I do kind of like the way Games Workshop are doing the star players. The CRP is fantastic. The the build's tight. It's a great yep. format. But I like this interesting, different stuff. So the closest comparison is with Hemlock. 
which is the old one. So Hemlock, 170, 8237, just one guy. Lona, block, dodge, sidestep, jump up, stab, stunty. So you've got 190k. Do you take Hemlock or do you take Drawl and Dribble? I think actually, despite the skill overlap, yeah, they play very differently. Hemlock is a better player. Yeah, but you get two cool players <laughs> yeah. for the price of one. Yeah. But this guy is pretty hard to get down. This is literally: do I buy Pringles or do I buy two tube of Tesco <laughs> Stackums or whatever they're called? <laughs> but in two flavors. Yeah, two flavors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do I get barbecue or do I get both? Um, Hemlock is cool and. I think he's one of the most used um, Lizardman players because, like you said, he adds that dynamic, but he's also a blodger with sidestep yep, jump up. He's hard to get rid of. He's yeah. hard to get rid of. You can stick him in the face, stab, and you don't have to worry as much as, say, with a, a Dark Elf Assassin. Yeah. That he's just going to turn around and get punched. Because you've got that dodge. You've got that dodge. And block. Oh, and block, yeah. yes. This guy is. So, I mean, he's That's hard fine. to get down. Okay, so I'm. what I'm hearing is the dream is all three. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, in that all skink team. <laughs> oh, all oh, skink, yeah. hemlock, <laughs> drawl and dribble, and just carnage. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah. Challenge accepted. What are your thoughts on hemlock, Lewis? Brilliant player. Um, but I think you've to make the most of his skills, you maybe need to commit too many of your own team to him and all, and all of your players are important so of the two if I had the cash of course I'd be going for Jewel and Dribble so I think Hemlock does his thing on his own That's these it. two support your team mm. by adding a different dynamic so they're not like some of the shorthands pass star players that help your team score these guys just help your team yeah. go about you, you play Blood Bowl with the team and you just muck about with these yeah. two guys. And now I've got the option of stamping. Yeah, them. I'm going to run up, I'm going to stab you. Yeah, well, it's worth a shot. Who and gets they're not, now? importantly, hogging your SPP they are for not. your players. They are not, which is which, which is really cool. Is understated with a lot of the star players. I love this. Yeah, I great. think there's some interesting options. They're cool. I don't yeah. think you're going to get to run them very often in a league. <laughs> I think cool tournament builds, probably subpar, like... B, C grade, but still really great fun. Yeah, they are, I think they're fantastic. Okay, so now we have Glottal Stop. And he is your Coxigor star player. Yeah. Okay, this guy is uh, 360k, movement 6, strength 6, edge 1, armor 9. So he's a strength plus Coxigor right now. He's got Lona, Mighty Blow, Prehensile Tail, Thick Skull. So standard Crox things. He loses Bonehead, but he gets Wild Animal. But he comes with Frenzy and Piling On. So he's kind of like this weird Minotaur hybrid. Hmm. Interestingly, he can play for Lizards and Amazon, and I know we're going to talk about it in a second. 360. All right, that's a huge amount. Nashrak, Ripper, um, there's a Skaven, Rat Ogre. They're all in that kind of bracket, aren't they? That 300k big guy extra build. What are your thoughts on him? Wild Animal, Frenzy, Mighty Blow, Piling On, Prehensile Tail, <sighs> 360 for a strength 6 guy. Now, I love the idea of two strength 6 frenzy blocks, mm. but he's wild animal and he doesn't have block or wrestle or jugs. <laughs> Unlike Bertha. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. I love big guy star players. Mm. I think they're so cool. That's right. Blackhoof is one of the coolest players, aren't yeah, they? Cool. Lewis, weigh in here, man. You're the lizard right, king. Okay. Um, I don't know. Personally, I, I, I want to like him, but um, my thoughts are that Frenzy. I think he's going to end up getting isolated without block, even with strength six. I suppose you can rely on a lot of two die blocks. You can rely Ideally, on two die blocks. Three die blocks. And if you've got some guard guys in there, but you know, yeah. he, he could go off on his own little adventure. <laughs> with yeah. about a quarter of your team value, and I think a lot of a lot of uh, linemen or anyone a bit more disposable from other teams would happily take a both down against him. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> just to remove him. Um, yeah, yeah. If you can, yeah, a fifty k sacrifice to take out three hundred and sixty k of somebody else's team is is huge. Um, not a fan of this guy, then, guys. I, for the lizard men, I don't think 
he is as good as perhaps actually he would be for Amazons. Okay, so let's talk about the Amazon angle then. So what does he provide the Amazon team they don't already have? So at the moment, the Amazons can say Bertha, Big Fist. Yep. Who's the, the Lady Ogre. Uh, yeah. She's only strength five. Got the movement six though. Uh, and in terms of her skills, that's a more. She's got a throw teammate, which doesn't apply. <laughs> I wish it applied to Amazons. She's got break, tackle, and dodge, which is the combination we talked about earlier. That's huge for a star player. It is. That is really cool. Counts as out loner, um, so you can get that. Uh, and mighty blow as, as yeah. such. Uh, yeah. Uh, this guy is another option mm. if you're looking for a, a big guy in the Amazon team, because I, th I think in lizard men. The crocs are like Lewis has said already, isn't someone you want running off. No. Isolating themselves. They've got to be part of that cage. They've got to be part of your, your line. This guy doesn't really do that. With Amazons, maybe he you know offers a bit more of a cage break and gives them something to focus on other than hitting your armor yeah. seven yeah. Amazons. So it's, it's a cool bit of toolkit. I think that'd be quite cool. Something different. Something different. But but the thing is with the Saurus, it's saying, Hey lizards, have some strength. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I love I love strength, <laughs> but I've got this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. So if you've got a sweet Croxagore model, just level up your guy. Yeah. Build what you want him to be. <laughs> That's quite cool. So there isn't really um a match in the old world for that. Let's have a quick look and just check. No. So there's no there's no there's no star player for Croxagores in the old um, in the NAF team list so mm. that's alright we've not lost anybody talking of people we've seen before mm. Helmut Wolf Morgan Thorg and Zolkath the Zote so Helmut Wolf is your 110k 6338 chainsaw guy he's got loner secret weapon chainsaw and stand firm so 110k you get the chainsaw guy but also he's got stand firm so he gives that kind of slight support for cages <laughs> um are you likely to take him very often, Lewis? No. <laughs> uh, no. Um, why would I not take him? I mean, he's good value. 110 He's great. Um, he would be good to get... What would I be using him for? I suppose maybe... Probably the big chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is that, yeah. I, I, I'd be using him if I did take him. Let's say I just had a team and he was on it. I'd use him to try and take out the low-level guys. I'd use that chainsaw on... on on linemen, um, things like that, just try and win by attrition. You're a you're a chainsaw fowler, mm. aren't you, Ian? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Gives you another fouling option. So the Saurus has punched them down. Maybe don't get through the armour. Yeah. Or you need that player stunned. Chainsaw through. Orphan. So, yeah, 100, 110k, it, it's a cool option. If you're, if you're punching above your weight, um, and especially in a league, taking that chainsaw player, it just adds... The, it, it adds 200k for 100k because you threaten the life of one of their players, <laughs> which is great. In tournament, there is always that threat as well, and yeah. it does make your opponent It does, think it, it creates that, that change. But it does give you, as the Lizardman player, another player to worry about protecting. Yeah, and... Because he will get smashed off. I think you raised a really good blitz. point early when you said think about the player he's replacing as well. So I suppose it would have to be a skink, really. Yeah, if, you, if you're running your full sources, I think for a tournament build it could be quite interesting. And I think we saw in the Lizardman World Cup teams there were a few that did take Armour Wolf because he adds that different dynamic. Yep. That said, now we've got Drawl and Dribble. If you want that bit of, uh, you know, like, <laughs> maybe I'll get a removal. Kind of fun tech, yeah, almost. It is basically that list. Drawl and Dribble are a better yeah. choice, but they do cost 80k more, so you, you drop a skink. Yeah. Or you know, it's it's interesting. What could you get for him? One hundred and ten. We are looking at two kegs or a reroll. Team reroll. Or, yeah. or yeah. So what would benefit you more, team reroll or if you've only got a hundred k though? Reroll. He's going off straight away, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. You get him for one drive. Because you. Yeah. Exactly. Unless you are good at rolling sixes, like some players in our league, <laughs> for arguing yeah. the cool. I think if you're looking at a couple, if you're looking at a couple of hundred, you know, or you've got three rerolls. Maybe, yeah. Um, but I don't think he's one of your first choices. Next guy, Morgan Thorg. I've not heard of this guy before. Nah, who's he? Yeah, is I he he's a snotling player. <laughs> so he plays for everybody. He's he's four thirty six six three ten block loner mighty blow thick skull throw teammate. Morg is great. Yeah, but he's jolly expensive. Yeah, 
and I'm going to pose you the question if you had that amount of money are you taking him or are you taking Drool Dribble and Anky Panky um, for 10k 30k less mm -hmm. bit of a no brainer for me I would take the Anky Panky Drool Dribble combo or, or re-rolls combo and a yeah. mix of those two yeah, it's, I mean Morg is great um, but he is there he, I don't know just he's not that competitive no it's, it, it's the money factor really isn't it it's because it. actually his stats are incredible he's great he's a big guy without the downside skill but he's um he's just so so much for leagues yes and actually for tournaments too um, yeah that's <laughs> a third of your team if you're at a tournament which even gives you sort of extra Probably money over a third of exactly team, yeah which it, is it crazy. depends on the rules pack, but uh, even so and if you're down 500k in a league match just yeah there's like, so much other like, stuff you can get well you know anky panky drawl and dribble and a re-roll and a wizard lizard oh, <laughs> we all come to the wizard lizard <laughs> I'm looking it, forward to which it. is quite cool so that's Morg uh, we've got Zolkath the Zote as well who's a new one that was introduced for the Wood Elves he mm -hmm. can also play for Amazon yes, yeah, so, yeah. so, so, cool. so listen up 280 5529 Okay, so he's an ogre. Yeah. Disturbing Presence, Juggernaut, Loner, Mighty Blow, Prehensile Tail, Regeneration, and Sure Feet. So he's kind of pseudo movement six mm. because he's got Sure Feet. Movement six, movement seven. Disturbing Presence is quite interesting. Like, as a distraction. So that's the within three squares, they get minus one to ball handling. That's horrible. Nurgle over here. <laughs> And that, I mean, that paired with Prehensile Tail as well. Yeah. Gives him quite a few annoyance skills. He makes a difference to the pitch. 280 for a strength 5 guy. He's got Juggernaut and he's got Mighty Blow. So he can blitz well because Juggernaut gets to push you both down into pushes. Okay. He doesn't have Frenzy to make the most of it though. So it's kind of, he gets away with it. He's got kind of almost block, but yeah. not quite. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's a cool build. I just, I'm not so sure on him. No. What do you think? I think I'm probably more likely to take him than uh, the Crocs, because not only is he 100k cheaper, I think he. He's, yeah, he, he he's got no downside. No, and he adds he adds a few cool skills. You get the disturbing presence, and you do get a strength five, no nega trait, mighty yeah. blocker, mighty blower. With juggernaut, so you can kind of get away with it with it with a blitz. He's quite cool, but he's not. I don't think your first choice because he's in that massive price range. Are you going to do that, or are you going to take a rerun on a wizard? No. But That's if you want a cool zote on the pitch, yes. <laughs> now, what they the Games Workshop team on the Twitch did hint there was a zote coming. Ooh. I don't know if I read into that. Well, I don't think I read into that. I think it's literally said, you know, watch the space. I don't think you can read into that. No, because yeah, space is pretty big. <laughs> that's a big gamble to put out a star player but I mean he features on three teams in terms of a production that is a fair cost. shout except that they will brought out Deep Root who can only be on one team but he is the only half he is the only tree man model available I so say, yeah yeah. I mean, yeah tough one I don't know. tough one I mean one one thing maybe you could know the answer to with your, with your NAF connections let's have a look is okay. How are these going to play in with Slan? That is covered by the Rules Committee, and once a year, they review all the rules that came out, and they update that uh, excellent team list document yep. uh, with the star players. That said, I don't know whether they add these to teams that they're not listed. So okay. Corn, Bretonians, and Slan. Yeah. I don't know if they chuck these into those and choose, or I'm not, I'm not sure. I would hope they would because yeah, cause there's a few where they got a very clear analog. Yeah, this guy would absolutely belong in a slam team. But even you know, Slibley was slam before, wasn't he? I think so. Yeah. Because I remember Craig, Craig took him. Oh, so yeah, would, yeah, would Anky Panky be interesting? So those are all of the star players in the book. We'll look at the NAF team list document just to make sure that whether you're going to where whatever rule set you're playing, you've got a good idea of what star players are. We've covered Helmet Wolf. We've covered Hemlock. We've covered Morg, we've covered Slibley. There's so two more guys to talk about. One is Lotta Bottle. Uh, he's 220, 8338. So what is he? Is he a tough skink? 
He's a very tough skink. 8338. So he's got Lona, catch, diving tackle, jump up, leap, pass block, shadowing, very long legs. Sorry, lot of bottle is a slam. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. He's, he's a slam. He is slam. Leap, <laughs> leap, very long legs. So he's leaping around <laughs> on a three plus. He's got pass block and shadowing and diving tackle. And if he does fall over, he can jump up again. So very long legs and catch means he's intercepting better because you get plus one for very long legs and you get to reroll. So. You know, that's pretty good. So that's what that's a five plus with a reroll to intercept, and he's got pass block. He's two hundred and twenty k. He's got shadowing. He can be a scoring threat. He's got that leap. He doesn't have dodge, but he does have catch, so you can get him the ball and his movement eight. I, I'm I don't know. I don't I wouldn't even know where to start with this guy. <laughs> no, I mean it's another it's, it's another agility three player with good movement. Yeah. The yeah, I mean, his name perhaps alludes to his uh, his role. Oh, okay. Lots of bottle. Because he just, just gets he's trying to get in stuck your face. into places. He's just going for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, one question because it's not a skill I've really used before, but with pass block. Yeah. Is it limited to one player that can use it? I believe it is. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I was wondering, you know, could Swap. he combo with the chameleons? No, I'm pretty sure it's one guy. Okay. But so yeah, the chameleons have kind of put him out of business. <laughs> um, but actually with the very long legs that helps the interception it does so and he's got catch that's, so that's really cool however how often do you really get against a throwing team but that's again that he's a star player so you can pick you're exactly right so you're playing against pro elves lots of bottle him in and you're hope up. for a five plus let's hope um for 60k more though you get zolkath the zote He's got this disturbing presence, so you can mm. still apply that pressure, and you can also mince people with a strength five mighty blow. Not as good at jumping. <laughs> <laughs> and we want the best jumping player is that chaos frog guy yeah. with uh, edge two and, and leap <laughs> success. I think, um, you, I think you could end up with the tail wagging the dog if you would if you were to pick him with the idea that he was going to be intercepting all over the place because I don't think he would. <laughs> he promises so you, much. You, you, you never say this. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. You would have <laughs> to have a lot of bottle to run this game. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, <laughs> running your team around him, I think, if you want to use him for. Yeah. And he's not, good fun. he's not worth building around, which I think is where you're going with that. And talking of Leap, we have Quetzal Leap, who is 250, 8247. So this guy is Loner, Catch, mm. Diving Catch, Fend, Kick Off Return, Leap, Nerves of Steel, and Very Long Legs. So this is another, um, so this would be a Slam Catcher star player, basically. Diving catch, so you get to catch the squares around you, and it's plus one for an accurate pass. And you've got catch, so you're getting that reroll. And he's got kickoff return. So I like this guy as an enabler for your team. Mm. So we spoke earlier about Jordan Dribble and how they don't take the SPPs away from your guys. Neither does this one. You put him in the backfield. Kickoff return means he gets that three squares of movement. Yeah. He's got diving catch, which means he's kind of got four squares of movement to receive the ball because if it lands next to him he can still try and catch it he's got plus one to accurate passes so if you do need to use him as a receiver you can do that if you use him as a receiver he does take your SPPs but I think ideally you keep this guy in the backfield mm. you get the kickoff return he feeds the ball and he gives the ball to somebody else with edge four you're picking it up on a two plus if it's on the ground two plus yeah. pick up and he's catching it on great things as well and he does give you that kind of reserve uh, well at least Quetzal Leap can like, I've got I've got a crack at a two plus Leap Yes, he's got nerves as well, so he's running around. He's doing quick passes, doing quick passes on two plus. Yeah, I like this guy. <clears throat> I think he's cool. I <clears throat> think he's cool. I've never seen him run. I think he's cool, but two fifty is is a, is a lot of money. Yeah, two things that stand out to me. Firstly, the edge four. I think that makes him very useful. Secondly, that movement, which is really good. Um, it's just the price. It comes down to the price. I mean, would you take him or would you take two re rolls and a kick? that's a huge impact on your team it depends what you want to do because he gives you a store of scoring threat and he does enable your team a little bit um, he's definitely worth considering mm, I, I like think. him because 250 isn't that much for a movement 8 edge 4 you know that can who, just but, having that safe pair of picking up the ball on a 2 plus well yeah I mean he's still leaping around on a 2 plus he doesn't have dodge <laughs> now no, no, he's got no protection he's got no protection at all but I don't think that's how you use him. You well, leave him at the back of your field <laughs> he's when got, you're receiving. Yeah. Run the ball in. And then if you're absolutely up the creek 
and he can be your paddle and you can go <laughs> for it he, you can go for it maybe in a tournament looking at 11 50 1200 he could be an interesting build around but i think you kind of have to build around him and you would lose other stuff to take him yeah um another one for the skink team yes yeah absolute skink <laughs> enabler really really cool we've already talked about slibly so that wraps it up for all the star players favorite ones uh, it's got to be Drool and Dribble. I love Drool yeah, and Dribble. Yeah, Drool and Dribble and a close second, Anky Panky. Anky Panky's good. He's fine, but he, to me... He's a cheap sibling, but the, the other two are, are Lizard and Goblins, which yeah. is cool. So there's one more inducement that we want to talk about. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Please. It's the one Ian's been waiting for. I can't wait. The, what you I can't wait for the, this, actually. The lizard Wizard. The lizard I, mean, wizard. I haven't heard these rules. It's the first time I'm hearing this. So Lewis has been out of the loop because he's a bit of a country boy <laughs> <clears throat> so not to one wizard inducement so you can take him as your wizard so you can't take a regular sports hiding wizard so you can't turn people into frogs no. that would be thematic <laughs> so basically you've got two choices this guy also plays for Amazon so Amazon can take your sun mage priest you buy your wizard 150k inducement and you get two spells you get to choose one in the game Okay, so he's got tectonic shift. So at the beginning of any of your turns, or at the end of any of your turns, before anybody does anything, you can try and cast this spell. It needs a three plus to cast. What it does is it moves everyone on the pitch one square mm. in a direction. So you cast a spell on a three plus, and then you roll another dice. On a one to two, everybody comes back towards yours. On a three, four, five, they move towards the opponents. And on a six, you choose any end zone or sideline. So if you've got a scrum on the sideline, side cage, mm -hmm. and you roll that sweet three followed by a sweet six, you just you just two p coin machine their team off the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> it does say that there is a crowd surf, so the crowd eats them and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. That said, you are looking for that six to make it happen, but it, I think primarily you've got a 50% chance of moving your team towards the end zone um, towards your opponent's end zone so you, you know you cast that at the beginning of the half everybody's moved up one square and it, it's, it's quite good now there is the, the very very clutch situation where you could use it to score yeah it, <laughs> the rules actually do cover that if the ball carrier scores a touchdown as a result of this count the touchdown as a normal one but only after all players have been moved and any crowd push is resolved yeah. so yeah he can yeah. score and it's quite cool that is cool the other one which I think is just as cool is reality blinks so beginning of your turn end of your turn before people do stuff you two, you choose two players they can't have the loner skill they can't have the ball and you roll a dice uh, on a three plus those two players of yours switch positions. Mm. That's cool. On a one or a two, they lose their tackle zones and they gain no hand skills for that turn. They kind of become translucent. Yeah. <clears throat> Ethereal for a turn. Now I, I read through this on the uh on the Lizardman review because they're so they're so interesting. And they're not bad. They are a gamble and 150k is a big amount. Yes. Yeah, I think particularly with Tectonic, uh, you've first of all got to cast it, and then you've got to be really, really lucky to get what yeah. you actually yeah. want. You need it's basically yeah. a three plus, and then a three plus yeah. to to get that into that. And I, I <sighs> but reality blinks on a three plus. You swap two guys. I think that's cool. If you get it wrong, they they lose you've their tackle for a turn. Yeah. You do have to use it carefully, but I mean, if you've got if they've based a skink or there's you know that you need to your skink has set oh my gosh no actually the chameleon skink has shadowed the ball player you you swap them with your with your leveled up saurus yeah because there's nothing in there that indicates that's your move or anything like no, that because it's yeah. happened before or at the yeah. end of your turn it could even be at the end of the turn you run your your guy up there base him and then bamf you swap him with the saurus and they have to start so their so, turn so for that one yeah immediately after yeah yeah okay so at the beginning of your turn or at the end of your turn even if your turn ends at a turnover you can still on a three plus swap that round mm. it's cool but is it worth 150 
How often can you cast this? Once a game. A game. Once a game. And that's one of the two spells. You choose the slan, and then you go, right, my slan's going to cast a spell, and I'm going to use Tectonic Shift. Roll the dice. <gasps> cast it. Roll the dice again. <gasps> Everyone goes towards my end of the pitch. Ah, carnage. Uh. <laughs> they are situational. I really yeah. I really want to like this guy. But <laughs> he's... I don't know. It's, it's too much money tied up. I mean, it could, it could win you the game. That's it. Um... Is it more reliable than it's, the no, alternatives? No, it's a gamble. Yeah. It that is, is a gamble. The, that is the fun of it. I think it's brilliant fun. I think when you want this guy is when you're in the territory of I can have a star player and I've got 150k. Yeah. Then it doesn't feel like you've lost all your inducements if it doesn't pan out. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Um, or some kind of tournament where everyone gets a wizard. <laughs> That'd be great fun. Wizard ball. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Um, cool. So that wraps up all of the inducements from the Lizardman Spike magazine. What are your thoughts on them now compared to how they were before? Um, my first thought is I'm definitely going to pick up a box very soon. <laughs> but is that just because of the hats? <laughs> it's no, no, not not at all. I think <laughs> between the chameleon skinks and the uh, those special a couple of the star players. I think they actually feel like a more fun team to play. They have got this team got seasoning. Yeah, this team was your chicken because everyone knows they're good. And now it's on the way to KFC. Now they're good <laughs> and a bit of fun. Yeah, you've got that <laughs> alternate build, and that's yeah. what we're seeing out of these new products. Is that alternate? You get a different choice, subpar, sometimes just completely unplayable. Yeah, but a different. But I'm choice. all about that. I think it's great fun. <laughs> I think it's great fun. So Lewis, as the Lizard King. <laughs> um, Godzilla's got nothing to say about that. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't speak lizard. Um, <laughs> art, well, I don't know. Is that offensive? Can I say that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I well, am. Not right. this oh, is, that, is that offensive? <laughs> to, to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> to you and uh, the Queen of England, apparently. Yeah. Who mm. is apparently a lizard <laughs> person. So, is that going to alter lizards for you? Uh, yeah, I think. Ian's hit the nail on the head really when he says I mean they're still good it doesn't, nothing's been taken away from no, them exactly. they're just fun yes got and, more uh, stuff yeah 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 more stuff so no bad thing um, I, I still think they're brilliant um, I'd like to play them again in in, uh, in a league and sort of have a bit more fun with them maybe with a box set of the new guys £20 you've got another team I yeah. know that's the trap at the moment, yeah. but actually Nurgle, Chaos, Lizards, uh, I would say Halflings, but that's remote, just so wrong. But those guys, you pick up a team and it's a fun little project and actually you've got some fun builds. And um, I, I think they're great. I'm building up a team now to play some, some Sevens with them. Yeah, and I think it hasn't been said that the great thing with this box is, I think you said earlier, it's literally a box and a Crocs. And you're done. I'll coin that. Box and a Crocs. Box and a Crocs. And you've got everything really <laughs> yeah. that you need. Unlike, say, orcs and humans, where you, where need you do need to double up and a box. or get the boosters. Which, oh, for the orcs, no. <laughs> uh, no. Because you're still missing a blitzer. No, two, two boxes for the rest of the teams. And then you do still have that big man choice. But this is, yeah, box and a crocs. I'm really impressed that you get six sauruses, I'll be honest. I'm so pleased. Yeah. Um, well, I say I'm pleased. I'm a little disappointed because I would have liked to have bought that second box. <laughs> you still uh, can. I, I, I probably will somehow. Use the rest of your skink team. Um, and you know, to get those extra tokens and things, uh, it, it's it's really cool. But this is such a great product for new starters that don't want the traditional. So you've got humans, you've got orcs, you've got Skaven. I also think are quite a good team for starting players. They'll lose, but they'll have fun. Mm. And you've got these these guys. And the undead team. So you've got five teams there. But these, this box and the undead box are probably the top two products I'd recommend for a new starter. Um, sure, you need a Crocs. But you don't need a Crocs. You don't need one. If you, right, I, if I don't get a Crocs, I'm only running four strength, uh, six strength four <laughs> guys. You know what? You're going to be fine and you're going to have an extra reroll because of it. Like, don't worry. <laughs> like, don't worry. If you're going to play in the league and you want to play competitively, then go for it. But actually, if you're not going to run a Crocs, you can still have a great time with these guys. Mm. Um, I, I, I think I think it's great. I think Lizardmen are great. I've never really played them much. Played a few games on BB2 and stuff just to muck around with them. I've played against them lots. Thank you, Lewis. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, good fun. They're Can't great. Mm. Cool. Anything you guys want to add on Lizardmen before we wrap that up? I mean, I'm really glad Games Workshop have come out with these cars. I was wondering. I thought it was a matter of if instead of when. Um, I'm hoping they'll follow up and come out with a decent Crocs. But yep. there's tons of options out there. Tons. Yeah, that look good and would fit in with this team, actually. So, um, yeah, really excited. Um, might have to pick up a box of these guys. Well, Christmas soon as. Yeah. <laughs> Shame they went out for your birthday. <laughs> well, and, and as we know, they make great wrapping paper. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Risky. But, you know, <laughs> less risky than a Slan Mage inducement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't have to roll two three pluses to make it work <laughs> right thank you that wraps up everything on Lizardman um, just want to thank you both again for joining me on the show absolute pleasure um, always a good laugh great fun to talk through this and, and, and great to talk about Blood Bowl really everybody out there thank you so much for listening and um, let us know your thoughts on the Lizard team and the new spike and what it does to the team build and everything like that Um Follow us on YouTube. Thank you for listening to the podcast. See you next time.